The F-89B was recently released in the 1.91 Night Vision update and was immediately met with criticism for being overpowered. Alright lads, in this video I'll be going over the performance, guns and balancing issues of the F-89B Scorpion. This jet is located in the American tech tree and costs 7,540 golden eagles. There is also an F-89D version, also a premium. Both of these jets get the maximum silver line boosters of 810% and a very high RP booster of 606%, making them great for grinding out the American tech trees and making stacks of silver lines. The obvious place to start are the guns. The F-89B gets 6 M24A1 20mm revolver cannons with 1200 rounds total ammo for 200 rounds per gun. These guns are practically identical to the guns found on the F-2 Sabre 1.7 battle ratings higher. The 1200 rounds of ammo sounds like a lot but an incredibly high fire rate means you only have 8 seconds of trigger time before your Winchester and Nita RTB. Your six cannons are nose mounted, and as long as you are accurate and have good trigger discipline, 1,200 rounds is easily enough for an ace in this plane. I recommend using Ur target belts. The belt is three high explosive fragmentary incendiary rounds and one armor piercing incendiary tracer round. Not only do they hit like trucks, the huge amount of tracer coming out of these guns is bound to make enemies pull off from head-ons. The stealth belts are usable, but I wouldn't recommend them for new players. You can't afford to spray with these guns. You do not get access to any bombs or rockets, which means you aren't able to use this plane as a fighter bomber in ground realistic battles. Next, the engines. The F-89B is powered by two Allison J-35 jet engines, with 2185 kilograms of thrust each. These engines have afterburners, yes, afterburners at battle rating 7.3. The huge power output with these afterburners allow you to climb at a 20 degree angle and be above every other enemy jet, apart from earth spawning garados, giving you a huge advantage in the early game, where enemy jets are still building up their speed and altitude. However, the afterburners double your fuel usage, meaning if you take 20 minutes of fuel and run it on full afterburner, you will run out of fuel in 10 minutes, so fuel level should be monitored and needless afterburner usage kept to a minimum. It's not often a plane's top speed in a straight line is determined by its fuselage, and not by its engine power. It's not hard to see why people are calling this overpowered at 7.3. Let's talk about that fuselage. You will immediately see if you take this thing out for a test drive, that it is absolutely massive. It has a huge tail that obstructs forward vision, especially when zoomed in, which has caused my aim to be thrown off a few times. It is a shame that such a large tail doesn't give this plane good rudder authority. The F-89B is similar to the P-51 D-30. It struggles at higher speeds to get its nose on target. To counter this, row the plane in the direction of the enemy's flight path and use your elevator to essentially do the job of the rudder. The elevator is very good on this jet, it has good authority at all speeds up to around 800km per hour, where it starts to compress. Under 800km per hour, the F-89B turns well for a jet, far better than the ME262. The manoeuvrability sweet spot of this jet is between 700 and 750km per hour. Faster than this, and your turning circle opens up massively. The wings of the F-89B are very wide, very long and have fuel tanks on the tips. This is good in terms of lift, but it has a negative effect on the roll rate of the plane. By no means is the roll rate terrible, but it's certainly a bit sluggish. The wings also feature a pair of air brakes, located on the tips of each wing. These air brakes are very effective, almost too effective, slowing you from 900km per hour to 700km per hour in a matter of seconds. The reason I mention this is the fact this plane will rip its wings at around 920 km per hour, a speed that many enemy planes can exceed in a dive, and if you air brake whilst in pursuit, it will often slow you down too much. Therefore I recommend just tapping your air brake button for a brief open and close of the brake to prevent excess speed loss. The fuselage and engines are pretty weak when it comes to negative G manoeuvres. Pulling negative Gs will cause your engine to cut off due to fuel starvation, and if you roll hard while pulling neg Gs, your wings will shear straight off. This isn't a huge issue, as neg G manoeuvres aren't common or really that useful. There isn't really any go-to tactic when playing this jet, it can do everything reasonably well. I typically just go full afterburner at the start of a game and put it into a 20 degree climb, heading straight towards the enemy and then diving on enemies of opportunity. If you get into a dogfight, 
Try and fight in the vertical, where your afterburners give you a huge advantage, especially in low speed stall fights. We will now go on to some gameplay, followed by a conclusion at the end. So here we are. We're a few minutes into this battle already, but we spot an enemy bomber above us. It was about 4 kilometers above us, remember that, 4 kilometers. We're just going to go straight into a zoom climb, we didn't really have that much speed to begin with. But we aren't really losing it that fast, and dead bomber. It's not overpowered guys, it's completely balanced. I'm just going to cut this clip into several little uh, snippets. You don't think you need to see a full gameplay to understand how good this jet is. But we're going to use our air brakes here. At this slower speed, we outturn the ME262. Doesn't really have a chance to be honest. If he tries to run in a straight line, we'll catch him with our better acceleration. If he tries to turn, then we turn better than him. So, not really much they can do. So we've got two kills. Our third kill is about to be a, a round of two, three, four. Doesn't really stand the chance because he isn't a bomber. He's got four engines, but we accelerate him. We outturn him as well, and we set his engine on fire, and he's about to go down. I believe a friendly gets the final blow, but we still get the air kill. Next victim is the Horton 229, probably the most dangerous jet you'll fight in this plane. Treat them pretty much like zeros, but 620mm to the face, and he's gone. Now, last guy was a bomber that was running. Another Arado. Starts to pull away from me here, but then we whap on our... Uh, Afterburners, and you can see just it doesn't matter how many engines he's got, we're still going to catch him. And he has to turn now because I'm in gun range and it just makes it worse. Set his engine on fire again. And like the other Rado, our teammates are actually going to kill him, but we still get the kill. As a quick ace, you can see from our five kills in eight minutes, or well, eight minutes total time, so half of that would have been take off and get into the battle. 5 kills, 140k silver lions, 17,000 RP earned. This is a very good plane for grinding the American tech tree. My F100 progress has been with all of this jet, just getting the clips for this video. I'm pretty much halfway there. So our next game. There's a narwhal and a friendly meteor having a fight. We've just joined the fight. We've got him off the back of our meteor. So it's just going to be a nice 1v1 now. Now this is one of my very first games in this plane. So I'm a little bit unsure about its responsiveness. You can see me just wasting shots. You see me struggling to get guns on target. And you can kind of see how the, the rudder struggles a little bit when you're trying to make quick snappy uh, movement changes. But as long as we stay behind this narwhal with our air brakes, we've got more power than him, we can turn better than him, and we can out-accelerate him. You can see here he started to pull away a little bit, but then I put my afterburner on and we're right back on him. Now this isn't really how you should fly this jet, you shouldn't really be getting in dead close like this. Like I say, it's my first few games, can't remember if it was my first, I don't think it was the first, it was one of the first. Still trying to figure out how to fly it. Now, we don't turn well enough to get guns on here, but you can just see he goes into the vertical and he drops off all of his speed, and he's pretty much a sitting target now. We've got our afterburner, so we can do vertical manoeuvres all day. And he's dead. To conclude, I believe this plane is overpowered at 7.3, without a doubt. The only real enemy you need to worry about is the Horton 229, and even then, all you have to do is fly in a straight line and you'll easily outrun him. The F-89B is kind of like pornography. It's all good fun, but it doesn't really represent the other non-premium jets around the same battle rating. So all the habits you pick up flying the F-89 probably won't be useful in other jets. In fact, they'll probably end up getting you killed. Or in pornography's case, probably arrested. The 7.0 to 7.7 .7 battle ratings are usually characterised by the early jet engine technology, translating in-game to high top speeds but with very low accelerating engines. The F-89B kind of destroys that meta, having afterburning engines which can get you to top speed in a matter of minutes after takeoff. You out accelerate, out turn and out gun most of the German teams. This plane does not belong at 7.3.
So what will happen to the F89B due to Gaijin's stupid battle rating compression? If it is up to 7.7 or 8.0, it will be fighting MiG-15 bisses pretty much every game, and no one would want to buy it, and Gaijin wouldn't make any money, so we know they aren't going to do that. I imagine it will be a performance nerf, or a reward booster reduction. I don't see how Gaijin could keep this jet in its current state and call it balanced. But it isn't likely to be nerfed for a while yet, at least another month or so. So is it worth buying the F-89B right now? If you don't have a lot of money and are looking for a reliable, long time purchase, then I'd personally wait a while and see what they do to this plane. If you have some spur money and don't care about the plane's long term grinding ability, the F-89 is a great buy for some short term fun. I hope you found this video useful lads, and thank you very much for watching.